about 20,000 tonnes of sodium is made per year in the UK. The main use of sodium is in the manufacture of additives for leaded petrol. It's also used to make indigo, the dye for blue jeans, and pharmaceutical products such as the painkiller ibuprofen. The associated Octel plant at Ellesmere Port in Cheshire is the only producer of sodium in the UK. The raw material for making sodium, common salt, sodium chloride, comes from nearby underground deposits. The site has good motorway links and products are exported via the Manchester Ship Canal. The process uses a cell with a graphite anode and a steel cathode. The molten sodium chloride produces chlorine gas at the anode and molten sodium metal at the cathode. At the associated Octel plant, salt arrives here by road. This is the cell hall, which has room for up to 100 electrolysis cells. Cells are rebuilt in this workshop. The sodium which is produced is loaded for transport here, and this is the chlorine liquefaction plant. Solid salt, sodium chloride, arrives by road five or six times a day. The salt is thoroughly dry to a moisture content of less than 0.05% in these gas-heated rotary dryers. Water and hot sodium do not go together. Electrolysis takes place in these cells, called Downs cells. This is the raw material, dry salt, running into the electrolysis cell. Each cell has four sets of electrodes in two rows. The graphite anodes are surrounded by steel cathodes. Between them is a mesh diaphragm. Chlorine collects at the anode Molten sodium metal collects at the cathode and rises into a storage tank. The diaphragm prevents the sodium and chlorine from reacting. This is how each pair of electrodes is arranged. Outside is a steel cathode, then a diaphragm, and the graphite anode in the centre. These are the four sets of electrodes before the diaphragms have been fitted. The cells are made from steel, lined on the inside with heat-resistant brick. Each cell is rebuilt every 36 months. These are the steel diaphragms that surround the anodes. The cells drop below the floor level of the cell room. An electric current of around 40,000 amps flows through the cells. Large electrical connectors called buzz bars carry electricity to the cells. The cells are filled with a mixture of calcium chloride, barium chloride and sodium chloride, kept molten by the flow of electricity. The mixture is used because its melting point is 600 degrees Celsius compared with 800 degrees Celsius for sodium chloride alone. At 800 degrees Celsius, hot sodium and chlorine would attack the materials of the cell. As electrolysis proceeds, chlorine is sucked from the anode into the chlorine main. Molten sodium floats to the top of the cell and is stored in a two-hour tank. A little calcium is also produced at the cathode. As the sodium cools, solid calcium separates out. It's cleared from the riser pipe and placed back in the electrolysis cell by a process called tickling. At the same time, the sodium is emptied into a larger 24-hour storage tank. Each day, the 24-hour tanks are disconnected from the cell and taken to be emptied.
The gas flame under the tank keeps the sodium molten. The sodium is filtered through a porous steel filter. This is to remove any remaining calcium. Filtered sodium is stored, still molten, in warmed tanks. Some sodium is sold in blocks. The liquid sodium cools and solidifies in the trays. Blocks of the metal are cut to size and packed into airtight drums. The chlorine is liquefied. Most of it is used on site along with the sodium to make petrol additives.